Okay, so we come back to uh, some more specific uh, equations and uh, examples uh, that we will uh, end up using uh, in climate modeling. Uh, the topic is initial value and boundary value problems. We already kind of uh, did this, but now we're going to do it more uh, uh, specially looking at uh, equations that are well known as initial value and boundary value problems. So we had written this uh, heat equation for the atmosphere. Uh, we had averaged out uh, in the uh, uh, horizontal directions, let's say, and we were taking a vertical uh, column of air averaged. So H would can be used as, uh, which can be represented by a scale height of 8.2 kilometers or so, density of the air, heat capacity times the time derivative of temperature was given by h divided by r cosine phi, phi is the latitude, r is the radius of earth, and d d phi of this term here, uh, rho c uh, k phi 1 over r dt d phi cosine phi, which is temperature gradient, and the, uh, you can think of k phi as the diffusion coefficient. This is our Burico Sellers equation from uh, 1969 that uh, was used to look at uh, glacial deglacial problems. Plus 1 minus alpha phi, alpha is the latitudinally dependent albedo, times s phi, where uh, divided by 4, of course, because it's the sphere and uh, converting it into per unit area and so on. Uh, S phi is the latitudinal distribution of incoming solar energy and the emissivity that determines the outgoing long wave radiation and emissivity can also be made a function of uh, latitude here. Okay, So we can write this approximately as t to the fourth uh, as initial value t zero to the fourth plus uh, dt fourth dt uh, at uh, t zero times t minus t zero. So we're just doing a um, discretization uh, and uh, approximating that equation. So you can write this as t zero four plus, you know, you can do your uh, Taylor series expansion and get some approximation here. So you are now got an equation for uh, time evolution of the temperature as a function of initial value of temperature. Uh, okay, so uh, this is just an approximation, but it gives you a sense of what we mean by an initial value problem. This is, of course, a, a second-order equation. Um, we have d d phi of uh, d t d phi, so we have d squared t d phi squared, essentially, it makes it second order. If the eddy diffusivity is constant, then the equation becomes d c d t plus k grad squared c plus uh, alpha tilde c equals rho tilde x, where this is a constant, and we can solve this on some domain. This is a function as well of x. Uh, the spatial coordinate and uh, uh, is uh, a function on the uh, domain omega as well. So the initial value problem then basically becomes uh, constant k as, as an example, del c d t plus g k grad squared c plus alpha tilde c equals rho tilde x uh, function of x uh, functions c equal to uh, a f c, a function of uh, space and time, where x belongs to domain omega, uh, can be a solution of this in a very general form, but we need suitable boundary conditions and initial conditions. So if it has a time derivative, then you need an initial condition for integrating forward, and if it has spatial derivatives, then you have prescribe uh, the boundary conditions over the domain of integration as well, right? If such a solution results with an initial condition Cx0 at time t0 uh, given by some function of uh, space, so at time 0 you may have a distribution of uh, whether it's temperature, humidity, um, electrical charge, uh, whatever you are solving mass, then you need that initial uh, function. So that gives you uh, the form del squared c. So this, this is a 
goes into a steady state, then obviously this term will uh, goes to zero. Um, then you can get an equation uh, in steady state where grad squared c plus alpha c equals rho x bar, where we have taken alpha uh, as a, you know, we took k into alpha tilde and made a new constant alpha. It's just a general representation that we are looking at. So with constant alpha and the function uh, rho x uh, bar, rho x vector, sorry, I don't know why I said bar. For example, you get dif uh, different well-known uh, examples of uh, uh, initial value and boundary value problems. Here we have no time, so th these are boundary value problems. So uh, grad squared c is zero gives us the Laplace equation as we have seen before uh, without calling it a boundary value problem. The grad squared c equal to rho x gives us Poisson. We usually in uh, English we might say Poisson, but in French they say Poisson equation and if you have uh, rho going to zero but you have alpha that is non-zero then you end up with what is known as the Helmholtz equation. Just remember these names, uh, not necessarily explicitly uh, part of climate problems but f equations of those forms will appear in uh, our climate modeling and uh, climate system. Okay, so boundary value problem and then is a steady state uh, delta grad squared c plus alpha c equal to rho and the solution c uh, as a function of x results with boundary conditions uh, alpha xb uh, times dc xb dn plus beta xb cxb equal to gamma xb where uh, alpha beta and gamma are functions uh, of uh, any uh, point, any uh, point on the boundary, and these gradients, fluxes at the boundary, uh, perpendicular to the boundary, need to be prescribed when you have uh, a system like this <coughs> as a boundary value problem. Okay, <coughs> so taking that equation, the ba the boundary condition, then. Uh, if alpha xb goes to zero, then we get the Dirichlet boundary condition. Of course, remembering this is what alpha is. Uh, if beta xb goes to zero, uh, then um, this term goes to zero. So uh, the boundary condition simplifies. Th that gives us Neumann, Neumann boundary conditions. <coughs> In that case, the flux at the boundary just becomes uh, either prescribed or zero. Uh, if any other combination happens, then it's called the Cauchy boundary condition. Okay. One of the most common boundary value problem is the Poisson equation. So grad squared c is a function of rho. Uh, so that is del squared c del x squared plus del squared c del y squared equal to rho x y. Of course, this is very simple looking. It could be temperature uh, <coughs> with uh, a distribution in X and Y. Uh, could be electrical charge distribution uh, solving for that. Uh, or it could be mass source and sink solving for uh, mass distribution <coughs> in X and Y. So that gives us the introduction to the initial and boundary value problem. We'll take the next step in the next podcast, okay? <clears throat> Little scratch in my throat there, but uh, see you in the next podcast.